Here at Alpha Software, people tell us all the time they love Alpha 5 and its ability to quickly build sophisticated web applications. But ultimately, everyone has the same question, which is, where do I host my application once I built it? Well, it turns out you can host your application almost anywhere. Hi, my name is Dave McCormick, and welcome to Hosting Alpha 5 on a VPS. Okay, so you've built a great web application in Alpha 5, or you're about to. Either way, you're probably asking yourself, how do you get it online so that it's accessible from the Internet? Well, one option is to host the application yourself. You could do this easily if you have a good Internet connection, you have access to your firewall, and you can leave your PC running 24 hours a day. But for many people, there's a better option, and that's to get a VPS, or Virtual Private Server, account. With a virtual private server, your application is hosted professionally off-site where the hardware and the operating system are monitored and maintained for you 24-7. And you could do this for between $30 and $50 a month, which is much more cost-effective than leasing a dedicated server. And a VPS account can save you some time and some worry as well. In this video, we're going to show you how that's all done. Specifically, we're going to show you what a VPS account is, what to look for when signing up for a VPS service, how to log into your virtual server and set up the Alpha 5 application server, and finally, how to upload and run your web applications. We're going to do all this using a famous brand name hosting company called GoDaddy, although these instructions will work with other companies too, like one and one Zebrahost, and literally thousands of other hosting providers worldwide. A VPS, or virtual private server, is a powerful concept that's actually easy to explain. Picture a computer permanently connected to the Internet running one copy of Microsoft Windows, and its only job is to run Alpha 5 so that users can access your web application. Now, modern computers are very powerful, so even if your site has a lot of users, the computer still spends most of its time idling, doing nothing, which is a waste of computer power. So instead, hosting companies like GoDaddy use special software like Plesk to run multiple copies of Windows at the same time on the same computer. This is much more efficient, and it means that several hosting customers can share the same PC, even though each customer is running their own separate copy of Windows. So even though you're sharing a computer with others, it's virtually as if you had your own private server. Hence the name Virtual Private Server, or VPS. Now the big advantage here, of course, is price. Because you're not using a whole computer but just a fraction, the hosting provider can charge you a fraction of the price. Choosing a virtual private server account is really the same process you'd follow to choose any other server, in that you need to make sure that the server you choose has the system requirements to run the software you need to run. In this case, the software you need to run is the Alpha 5 application server. So here's what to look for. First, and this may be obvious, but the server needs to be running Windows instead of Unix or Linux. When you're selecting an account online, this is usually the first question you're asked. Generally, the host will offer Windows Server 2000 or Windows Server 2003. Either of these will work, as will Windows Server 2008, Windows XP, and Windows Vista, although the last two are usually not offered as part of a VPS account. Once you've selected an operating system, the next thing to look for is RAM, also called Guaranteed RAM. As a rule of thumb, get an account with at least 512 megabytes of RAM. Now that you know your operating system and the amount of RAM, the last two specifications are hard disk space, which is also called storage, and transfer, which is also called traffic or bandwidth. Most accounts start with 5 to 10 gigabytes of hard disk storage, which should be fine. And most accounts start with at least 400 gigabytes of bandwidth, which should also be fine. After you've signed up for service, it can take a little while for your hosting provider to set up your account. In the case of GoDaddy, they state that the approximate wait time is about five hours. They actually did it in about two hours when I signed up. But this isn't like a standard web hosting account, where account access is usually instant. So just know that there will probably be some waiting period. Once your account is set up, you'll be given an IP address for your VPS. And you should have set up a username and password for your Windows account on the VPS, probably at the time you signed up. But in the case of GoDaddy, you actually log into your account at the GoDaddy website to get and set this information. With your IP address, username, and password in hand, you're ready to log into your server for the first time. To do this, you'll use Remote Desktop. The quickest way to launch Remote Desktop is to go to the Start menu and choose Run. When the Run dialog box appears, type in MSTSC, 
which stands for Microsoft Terminal Services, then click OK. The Remote Desktop dialog box appears. In the Computer box, type in the IP of your VPS and click Connect. In a few moments, a standard Windows System Login box appears. Here you enter your username and your password and click OK, and you are in. Working in a remote desktop is really just like working on a PC locally. Here at the top of the screen, you'll see a small title bar telling you that you're connected to a remote PC rather than your regular PC. Now the first thing you'll want to do is install Alpha 5, and because you're working remotely, installing from an installation CD is really not an option. So instead you'll download Alpha 5 from Alpha Software's website, which means opening a web browser like Internet Explorer. When you get an account from GoDaddy, the link to Internet Explorer is right on the taskbar. If this isn't the case with your account, choose Start, Run, and type iExplore into the Run box to launch Internet Explorer. Again, you might want to pin that program to the Start menu. At the Alpha site, go into your account using your username and password. You can then look up your order and get the download links. If you have your order confirmation email in a web-based email account, you might find it easier instead to log into your email to get this information. VPS accounts are usually set for high security, so your browser may not let you download Alpha 5 until you make some adjustments, as you'll see right here. Now, when you download, there's a decision to make. Do you want to install a full copy of Alpha 5, or do you just want to install the application server? If you plan to develop your application on your VPS, as well as host your application there, then you'll need a full copy. Now, you don't necessarily need to purchase a second license number. Each full copy of Alpha 5 can be installed and activated on two machines, so you can reuse your serial number if you've only installed Alpha 5 on one machine. Now, this only applies to the development license. When you buy the application server, you'll get a different license number for that. That license number can only be used once, and that number is entered later in the Application Settings dialog box. So let's install and run Alpha 5. 